Hello everybody. I'm always doing that, aren't I? Playing away and then suddenly realise that I'm on the screen. It seems to me it's a little while since I did a Mr Man story. So I have decided that today I am going to do Mr Clumsy. I say I decided, actually, that's the one that came out of the box. I didn't really think about it. So I'm going to do Mr Clumsy, which is not a story that's done very often, I don't think. So, I don't know, all those Mr. Men experts out there, do we know what Mr. Clumsy looks like? Do we know what colour he is? He is, as you may or you may not know, he is a dark green. He has, what colour nose? He has a yellow nose. And what colour? He has shoes, which... I noticed the shoelaces are undone. Um, and what colour are the shoes, do you think? Obviously, green. He's obviously going to have orange shoes. And he's got probably the most untidy hair, both on his moustache, under his nose look, and his yellow nose, and his hair. But he looks a happy chap, doesn't he? But I wonder, what does Mr Clumsy, what does Clumsy mean? Well, I think clumsy means that you, you tend to sort of bump into things. You tend to drop things. Oh, like I dropped the book, for example. Or if I did, oh, oh, but what happened to the computer? That would all be very clumsy, wouldn't it? So let's see. In fact, you can see him in his bed there, and you can see there's a picture on the wall, a picture of a worm, I think, um, and it's all hanging crooked. And the rug, the rug that is there is all pulled up. So you'd trip over that, wouldn't you? So let's see what happens to Mr Clumsy. <clears throat> Mr Clumsy woke up and reached out an arm to switch off his alarm clock. Well, you know what's going to happen, don't you? He knocked it onto the floor. Whoops, he said. That's the third alarm clock I've broken this week. Mr Clumsy, as we can probably guess, is a very clumsy fellow. He got out of bed and switched on the radio. Do you know what happened? Look, the knob came off. It's obviously one of those old-fashioned radios where you turn it as opposed to just press a button. Whoops, he said. That's the second radio I've broken this month. He went downstairs. The postman had been and there was a letter waiting for Mr Clumsy lying on his doormat. He picked it up and went into his kitchen. First things first, he said, and he took a slice of bread out of his bread bin and popped it into his toaster. Now, he thought, I wonder who this letter is from. In fact, the picture shows him not coming down the stairs, but actually falling down the stairs. Not surprising, really. He looked at the letter in his hand. But the letter wasn't in his hand. What was in his hand? Oh, what was in his hand was a slice of bread. I think we can guess where the letter's gone, can't we? It was in the toaster. It was browning nicely. It's very lucky it didn't catch fire. That's why we'd never put paper in a toaster, because it would catch fire. Whoops, he said, fishing out. Ouch, he said, dropping it. It's hot. Mr Clumsy bent down to pick the letter up, but in doing so, he banged his forehead on his kitchen table. And in doing so, he fell forwards. And look, he got his head stuck in the bread bin. You can tell it's the bread bin because it says on the side, bread. All of which actually wasn't surprising really because as we said, he was a rather clumsy fellow. In fact, he was a very clumsy fellow. Actually, he was the clumsiest person in the world. Anyway, that same morning after he'd managed to get the bread bin off his head, that's probably why his hair looked such a mess. Mr Clumsy went to town. He went shopping. First things first, he said, and he went into the bank to get some money. And somehow, while he was in the bank, Mr Clumsy, while he was writing a cheque, managed to spill ink all over the bank manager, who does not look happy. Whoops, said Mr Clumsy. He went into the butcher's morning, butcher, he said, cheerfully. 
And then somehow, no. How did he do that? Somehow he managed to trip over his shoelaces and so he managed to fall into the butcher's shop window and somehow he managed to finish with a great long string of sausages all round his neck. Whoops, he said. Mr. Clumsy's next call was, oh, I think I know what's going to happen. Next call was the supermarket. And just inside the door, can you see, look, there is a huge pile of cans of soup. Well, that's not going to be safe, is it? Not with Mr. Clumsy around. Mmm, exclaimed Mr. Clumsy. Soup would be nice for my supper. And he picked up a can. And where should you take it from? That's right, the top of the pile. Where do you think Mr. Clumsy took it from? That's right, the bottom of the pile. Whoops, said Mr. Clumsy, and went on his way, rubbing his head where all the cans had bumped into him. I bet the people in the shop weren't very happy either. They've spent ages stacking those up. On his way home, he called into the farm for some eggs. And somehow, while he was crossing the farmyard, he managed to trip up. Do you remember Mr. Strong went to the farm, didn't he? And he, he bought eggs. He bought dozens of eggs all at the same time. Oh, no. Somehow, as he was falling, he managed to grab hold of the farmer. And somehow, they both managed to finish up in the duck pond. Splash! Whoops, said Mr. Clumsy. Please, said the farmer, as they sat together in the duck pond. In future, can I deliver your eggs to you? It'd be much safer, wouldn't it? Well, that's extraordinarily kind of you, said Mr. Clumsy. Oh, don't mention it, muttered the farmer. And there you are, you can see him look, both sitting in the duck pond. With no ducks. They've probably been scared off, haven't they? Mr. Clumsy went home. First things first, he said, and he went for a bath. But as he was stepping into the bath, his foot somehow managed to slip on his soap. He somehow managed to turn a somersault and he somehow managed to land with his head in the clothes basket. It's what we used to call an Alibaba basket, one of those with a lid, have a lid on it. He managed to fall in it. Rumps! Came a muffled voice. Still, later on, after his bath, he went downstairs for supper. Soup from the supermarket, sausages from the butchers, and eggs from the farm. Or rather, soup from the saucepan that had boiled over, sausages from the frying pan that had caught fire, and eggs, oh dear, very, 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 scrambled eggs. In fact, a normal Mr. Clumsy sort of supper. That was nice, he said, leaning back in his chair. And I think we are going to find out why you should never tip your chair back. Yup. Crash. Whoop, said Mr. Clumsy. I think I'd better go to bed. And he did. And that is the end of the story. Good night, Mr. Clumsy. Mr. Clumsy leaned over to turn off his bedside light and crash! Oh dear. Whoops. I'm surprised Mr. Clumsy has got anything in one piece in his whole house. It's a fun story, isn't it? I think what I might do is have a look at a little miss story that's been the next one. So hopefully you'll come back and see me then. And we'll see which little miss it is. So I hope you enjoyed that. Be happy and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.